Hello, welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Today I'm gonna to do a brief review of the movie Mandela, A Long Walk to Freedom. This is an excellent movie, I highly recommend it. We need to support movies like this, movies that portray African Americans or just Africans in a positive light. This movie is about the life of Nelson Mandela. Idris Elba plays um, the lead role as Nelson Mandela. He does an excellent job. He captures um, the mannerisms and the speech patterns of Nelson Mandela. Um, he, he's mastered that South African accent. Um, and, you know, while watching the movie, you actually get so wrapped up in the character that he actually becomes Nelson Mandela, at least from my perspective. Also, Naomi Harris does an excellent job uh, playing the role of Winnie Mandela. Now, I had a couple of questions about her, her role, and I may discuss those later on in this review. But overall, you know, I highly recommend this movie. Again, you all should go see the movie. Now I'm just going to talk about some aspects of the movie that stood out to me. One was just the sheer... Um, level of oppression that Africans face under apartheid. Here we have Nelson Mandela. He's an accomplished man. Um, this is before he got involved in the ANC. Nelson Mandela was a lawyer. Um, he earned a, a, a comfortable living as an attorney in South Africa. Uh, he represented people in court and he made strong arguments. And during this brief period in the movie where he's just a lawyer um, working for people, you get to see how even an accomplished man like Nelson Mandela was um, totally disrespected. Now, instead of being viewed as a man, as an equal, in the eyes of white South Africans, he was viewed as just a boy. And that's what they called him repeatedly. He, here he is, an accomplished lawyer and he's referred to as a boy repeatedly um, during this stage. So, I mean, that's just a, a simple example of how the South African apartheid system basically had no respect for black people, no matter what accomplishments a black person obtained. Uh, he was still just a, a boy or, or what they referred to as a Kaffir. Um, so, I mean, it was hard to watch some of those scenes. I mean, they were brief, but still it was, um, you know, it's horrible that a person would be demeaned um, despite those accomplishments. And upon, you know, further reflection, it kind of reminds me of the situation of our president, um, Barack Obama in America. I mean, here you have an African-American who, um, graduated from the best law school in the country, Harvard Law School. You have um, someone who was um, the president of the Harvard Law Review, someone with excellent credentials, someone who is now president of the United States and still he has, um, he's not respected as a man. Still he's, um, you know, just a nigger in the eyes of some people. But anyway, um, that aspect of the South African um, society stood out in this movie. You know, that was just a prime example, just how Nelson Mandela was treated. Also, another point in this movie that stands out to me is how they actually show uh, human frailty in this movie. They, um, they don't just stick to the politics or the PC stuff. They actually... Um, go into Nelson Mandela's personal life. And I, I have mixed feelings about this. Um, you know, part of me says, why is that necessary? Why even go into his personal life? But then again, this is a, a story of his life and it wouldn't be complete if you didn't address issues about his marriages and all that kind of stuff. So, but I, I thought that it was, um, it was interesting, you know, it, it um, brought to light things that I wasn't even aware of um, about his personal life. It talks about, um, you know, it shows infidelity in his first marriage um, and problems with his first wife. 
it shows, um, you know, just the tensions between an activist and someone who wanted to um, just survive under apartheid and didn't want to create trouble. It also shows the strain that, um, that being an activist has on marriages and relationships. Uh, that aspect was very interesting. Um, it goes into um, the marriage um, to Winnie Mandela, his second marriage. Um, it talks about like, it shows how it was great in the beginning and it just talks, showed the challenges of being married to someone under such circumstances where a man is forced to uh, engage in um, revolutionary acts against an oppressive system and he's forced to be away from his family for long periods of time and just the strain that that had on the, the relationship and then his later incarceration for 27 years and the effect that that had on his marriage to um, Winnie Mandela. So it's great that the movie went into those things because these icons that we look at up to, um, they're human beings, they have, um, you know, human frailty, like all human beings. And it's great that the movie actually showed that aspect of uh, Nelson Mandela's life. Also, throughout the movie, they showed different aspects of apartheid, just the, the nature of segregation and apartheid. And while seeing this, it, it reminded me of the struggle of African Americans in this country. It reminded me of the early civil rights movement. Um, it reminded me of the fight against Jim Crow in the American South. There are so many parallels between the anti-apartheid struggle and the civil rights struggle uh, that became apparent to me while watching this movie. Um, you know, just the, the peaceful demonstrations against these systems of oppression, um, the songs that people use to inspire them uh, to move forward in the face of adversity. Those are just a few of the parallels that I saw between the civil rights movement and the anti-apartheid um, anti movement um, that was portrayed in this movie. So, you know, that's another great aspect. And then the music, they played great music uh, during a lot of the protest scenes. Uh, songs that inspire me. Um, and one of those songs is Bob Marley's song, War, where he talks about um, until the philosophy of racism basically ends everywhere there'll be war. Um, also, they played another great song that I enjoy by Gil Scott Herring, The Revolution Will Not Be Televised. So, and again, those songs kind of like tie the connection between African people worldwide. You know, they connect um, the Caribbean with the United States and the, um, South Africa. It ties the struggle of all African people throughout the diaspora together. So I thought that that was a great aspect of the movie. Also, you know, just the spirit of sacrifice. That's one thing that I really enjoyed about this movie. Here you have Nelson Mandela, he's a lawyer. He's someone who's earning a relatively comfortable living. He could have been content just um, living out his life as an attorney, but instead he embraced the struggle for freedom, justice and equality in South Africa. So in the movie, um, you know, they show him participating in nonviolent demonstrations, um, the equivalent of sit-ins, um, you know, like the sit-ins that we had in the United States during the height of the civil rights movement. They also had boycotts and other forms of nonviolent resistance. And one of the key moments in this movie was the time when the people protested against police brutality. They gathered around a police station in, um, and I think the area is Sharpville. And the police, you know, make repeated warnings to the crowd. They tell them to disperse. And when the crowd continues to demonstrate, those police officers open fire on the crowd. And this event is called the Sharpville Mass Massacre. Um, over a hundred men, women, and children were killed during this massacre, unarmed, 
men, women, and children. And this was a turning point in the struggle um, in South Africa. At that point, Nelson Mandela and the ANC decided that nonviolence would not be an effective means to fight apartheid in the face of such brutality. So they embraced armed struggle. And, you know, armed struggle is um, an unfortunate thing, but often it is necessary. When no one, when people don't have legitimate means to create change, when they can't vote for change, when they can't lobby for change, when they can't uh, engage in nonviolent demonstration for change, eventually they have to take up arms and fight for change. They need to, in the words of Malcolm X, speak the language of the oppressor. And that's what Nelson Mandela did by engaging in armed struggle. And one aspect of this movie that I really enjoyed is just the spirit of sacrifice. I mean, how many of us are willing to sacrifice our lives and our freedom in order to free our people? Here, you know, Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail for his people. He faced a possible death sentence for his acts of rebellion against the racist, illegitimate, illegal apartheid state. And I just wonder how many of us would be willing to do so. And I've heard people criticize Nelson Mandela. Um, I've heard you know, these delusional right wing, even African Americans criticize Nelson Mandela. Um, but these people, you know, all they can do is sit behind um, a video like this and talk trash. They don't have a heart to do what Nelson Mandela did. Um, they don't have the courage to do what he did. And this also applies to a lot of these um, left-wing radicals, so-called radicals, um, these keyboard revolutionaries that talk a good game. But if they were faced with the same situation, they would not sacrifice life and limb for their people. It's easy to talk a lot of trash online, but how many of these people would be willing to spend 27 years of their life in jail for freedom? How many of these people would actually take up arms against an oppressive system? So, um, you know, that's one aspect of the movie that I enjoyed, just seeing that, that spirit of sacrifice captured on film. And a, a major theme throughout this film is the idea of manhood. Early in the film, they show the manhood ceremony that Nelson Mandela went through as a, a youth. Uh, as we all know, a lot of African societies have manhood rituals. They have rites of passage that all boys must go through in order to become men. And throughout the movie, we see glimpses of that ceremony take place. And it's a reminder that Nelson Mandela is a man. You know, despite what these people said, despite them calling him a boy or a Kaffir, or other you know, derogatory terms, he maintained his manhood. He maintained his manhood when he took up the struggle against apartheid. So that's one aspect of it. Um, the other aspect is the negotiations. Now there's been a lot of uh, news about Nelson Mandela lately because he recently passed away. And this movie, shows us the negotiation process. It shows us how Nelson Mandela had to negotiate with um, the uh, South African government to bring about um, a level of change in the society. Now, some have, um, a lot of left-wingers, as I mentioned earlier, have um, tried to criticize the legacy of Nelson Mandela by saying that he sacrificed too much, that he uh, gave away too much to the apartheid system. They're saying, well, he didn't um, get the land redistributed to the people, that black Africans. 
he didn't um, redistribute the wealth in South Africa. Um, you know, they emphasize those issues. They emphasize the fact that economic apartheid still remains. And those are valid points, but we have to look at the time um, when these negotiations were taking place. We have to look at the fact that we were at the end of the so-called uh, Cold War, where, you know, Nelson Mandela did not have, um, um, you know, leftist governments that would support the apartheid, um, you know, support the anti-apartheid struggle. Those leftist governments didn't have, you know, the same sway that they had before. Uh, they didn't have the same resources that they had before. So he was left with the option of either maintaining the, the current system of apartheid or making some change where the people would actually be able to end the segregation and outright apartheid and give the people the right to vote or just you know all or nothing type of situation he could have um you know just allowed apartheid to continue and you know and just remain in jail for the rest of his life um and that wouldn't have helped anybody either um so i think that a lot of this criticism is rooted in a disconnected sense of idealism it's not rooted in reality. Um, so that's one thing that I, I wanted to talk about. And the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the so-called black-on-black violence that took place in South Africa during the anti-apartheid struggle. Now, this movie failed to provide any explanation behind it. It just made it seem as if Africans were fighting each other. It didn't talk about the role of the South African government in perpetuating that black on black violence. It didn't talk about how the South African government instigated that violence and how the South African government actually, um, you know, had infiltrators spark that kind of violence. So I thought that that was one aspect of the movie that was lacking. Also, um, you know, the fact they didn't go into detail about the anti-apartheid worldwide movement. They briefly mentioned it, um, but I think that more could have been done in that area. Um, you know, that's something that they could have focused on as well. And, you know, the last thing I'll say is um, the movie kind of portrayed Winnie Mandela as being an extremist, you know, and... You know, that's one aspect of the movie that I didn't like, you know. I wish they could have done that in a different way um, to explain more fully her position. And, you know, I love that quote when she talks about how the, the people don't have AKAs. They only have their hands and they have their stones and they have their tires, their necklaces to deal with the traitors. Um, you know, that was a powerful moment in the movie. And, you know, it's true. Every nation deals with their traitors. And traitors have to be dealt with. And in any struggle, you have to deal with traitors. And, you know, that was just an aspect of the movie that stood out to me. And I just thought I would mention that. But anyway, that's my review. Um, tell me what you thought about the movie. And... I encourage you all to like this video and to subscribe to New Possibilities. Thank you.